We're at Aquedo in Abidjan, and a new day's work is about to begin. In one of the world's poorest countries, this is how many people earn their living, picking through the rubbish, looking for anything at all they can sell, even scraps of plastic. Thousands of people live and work around this site in Ivory Coast's largest city. And yet, this is where toxic waste from a rich Western company was illegally dumped. That's why they say around here that instead of bringing them wealth and opportunity, the company Trafigura brought them nothing but disaster. We can now reveal just what was really dumped here. The company has always claimed the waste was harmless. But our investigation shows that it was highly toxic, endangering the health of tens of thousands of people. Trafigura could have safely disposed of the waste in Europe. Instead, they shipped it to Africa. I'm just round the corner from the Aquedo tip and I've come to meet Jean-Francois Quadio. Apparently, he's lost both his babies because of the toxic waste. His wife, Fidel, had been eight months pregnant with their first child when a wave of noxious fumes engulfed their home. Doctors say this caused her to give birth prematurely. The boy, Jean-Claude, died within a day. My wife... When they dumped the toxic waste, we went to the hospital in Tuka and they asked us to get checked. Their second child, Amma Grace, was born a year later. She too fell ill and was taken to hospital. The team put a needle in her spine and they drew out some bone marrow to analyse it. Then they said that she was suffering from acute glycemia caused by the toxic waste. Amma Grace died last December. These medical reports say there is a strong presumption that her death was also caused by exposure to the toxic waste. The couple fear they may never become parents. The waste that's blighted Ivory Coast's commercial capital belonged to the giant mineral trading company Trafigura. It was shipped to West Africa against international regulations that aim to spare developing countries from Western waste. A tanker chartered by Trafigura docked here at Abidjan. On board were several hundred tonnes of the foul-smelling waste. It was collected in darkness by a convoy of trucks and then tipped all around the city. As the powerful stench brought people out into the streets, the drivers were forced to look beyond Abidjan. Some of the toxic waste was dumped here, right by the village of Gibi. It got into the water supply, killing all the fish that fed the villagers. Every last person here, 2,000 of them, fell ill. Three died, and they blame it all on Trafigura's waste. The head of the village, Essay Motto, showed me what's left of the fish farm. It's had to be abandoned and remains contaminated. We started to smell something unusual, a strong odour like a gas leak, and it was very difficult to breathe. And so when all this happened, people started getting sick. The femmes qui ont avorté. And then there were women who miscarried, and that was very painful. But still, the worst was that three people, two adults and a girl, were killed by toxic waste. That was very hard. Everybody, everybody was sick. The district of Dokui is home to 10,000 people and their doctor, Jean-Louis Louya. La population... The community, the neighbors, saw tankers here and people dumped the toxic waste here in this lake. There were people coughing everywhere. People came for consultations and they all had the same symptoms. 
the same problems affecting the ear, nose, and throat area, and we realized something must have happened. As Abidjan sickened, the scandal forced the collapse of the government, but the investigation pointed the finger at Trafigura. Trafigura is a company that puts the multi into multinational. It has bases throughout the world, including London, Amsterdam and New York. Its turnover, last year $70 billion, dwarfs the entire GDP of the Ivory Coast. So why did its waste end up here? A country that in 2006 was struggling to recover from a civil war. 3,000 miles away in Amsterdam, Greenpeace have been tracking Trafigura's operations. OK. Marietta Hayono says the problem began when Trafigura bought some low-grade oil, known as coconaptha. They tried to clean it up on the cheap to maximise profits. They picked up the coconaptha from Texas. Yeah. They brought it all over to Las Quira, Tunisia. They were kicked out of the country, so they decided to bring it onto a ship, the Probo Koala, just outside Gibraltar. For three months, the Probo Koala was turned into a chemical factory. They used the Probo Koala as a rough and ready refinery off the coast of Gibraltar. The problem was that the oil had too much sulphur in it, so Trafigura tried to remove it using a very unsophisticated method. They poured tons of caustic soda and a catalyst into the crude oil, about half of the sulphur settled out at the bottom. They could now sell the oil, but they were left with a toxic sulphurous sludge in the tanks. After three months, they sailed up to Amsterdam to discharge the slops, the toxic waste. With her hold full of a thick sulphurous tar, the Probo Koala came here to Amsterdam. And this is where the story should have ended. They told the Dutch authorities that what they had on board was ordinary ship slops, a standard wash water that can be safely got rid of for a few thousand euros. But when it was pumped on shore, the appalling fumes triggered an emergency. The Dutch took a closer look and discovered there was nothing ordinary about it. They told Trafigura the waste would cost half a million euros to treat. At this point, the company decided to find a cheaper option. The waste was pumped back on board and Proba Koala set a new course, one that would lead to West Africa. Now Trafigura is being prosecuted in Amsterdam. The charges against Trafigura, as well as the captain, are falsification of papers. They deliberately had work silent on the toxic nature of the, of the waste into the slop tanks. And the other charge is illegal import and export of toxic waste from one country to another country, as well illegal export from toxic waste from Europe to an African country, Côte d'Ivoire. A smaller company might by now be drowning in scandal, but Trafigura has always robustly defended itself. The, the, the vessel, as I said, was on the normal commercial voyage, and the, the slops it was carrying were absolutely not... Mr. De Turk, I, I think I'm making myself quite clear. Why did you choose to send it to the Ivory we Coast? We did when not the send the vessel to Ivory Coast. The vessel was on a normal commercial voyage. In fact, there was nothing normal about the voyage to Abidjan. Trafigura hired a newly formed company called Tommy. It had no license and no facilities to handle toxic waste, but it was cheap. Instead of paying half a million euros to have the waste safely disposed of in Amsterdam, Trafigura paid Tommy around 15,000 euros. Tommy's trucks came first to Aquedo, the city's biggest tip. After dropping off several lorry loads, the smell caused panic and they were turned away. In all, they used 18 different sites, including drains, ditches and waterways. Trafigura maintained that the waste was not toxic. These, these materials were not dangerous for human beings. They were smelly, but not dangerous. In fact, it was both smelly and very dangerous. Newsnight has obtained documents which show just what it was the Probo Koala offloaded here. It's based on an analysis 
carried out by the Dutch authorities. We've seen the analysis which indicates what was dumped on the streets of Abidjan. The waste included 40 tonnes of corrosive caustic soda and chemicals which can kill on contact. There were 25 tonnes of sulphur, including two tonnes of hydrogen sulphide, which is lethal in high concentrations. And 12 tonnes were mercaptans, the most powerful smelling substance in the world. And what I'm going to show you is this map. Yeah. John Hoskins, a fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry, says this toxic cocktail would trigger mass sickness in any city. Well, if we take a big city, Manchester or London, let's say Trafalgar Square in London, the centre of London, uh, you would have people being sick without any choice for several miles around. And that would involve, of course, in London, millions of people. And I think the effects will probably reach out uh, right to the M25 ring. It's that powerful. It's that powerful. It's that powerful a smell. It's the most odorous material that has ever been produced. With its equatorial climate, every downpour saw new chemical reactions. John Hoskins says this would account for further releases of deadly hydrogen sulphide gas and other toxins. Those that were more severely poisoned, it's not very hard to imagine that, that if a woman, a pregnant woman, is poisoned, that her body reacts by aborting the foetus. Over a long period, there will, there will be uh, long-term effects because these things are chronically damaging. And once you've damaged maybe your lungs or your liver or your kidneys, that damage will not recover. Many in Ivory Coast get by on about a pound a day. For the owner of the company, Tommy, which dumped the waste, a few thousand euros must have seemed like riches. But Salomon Agbarogbu is now serving a 20-year prison sentence, while no one from Trafigura has ever been prosecuted in Ivory Coast. The official investigation was dropped at about the time the company paid the government $200 million. Trafigura has always denied any responsibility for what happened here. Far from being the price of a guilty conscience, it says the money it paid the Ivorian government was a sign of its corporate social responsibility. But 30,000 Ivorians are now suing Trafigura in the biggest class action brought before London's High Court. Before the case has begun, serious allegations have been made of a dirty tricks operation. The lawyers acting for the claimants, Lee Day, say attempts were made in Abidjan to persuade key witnesses to change their statements, including offers of money. One witness, Bu Unja, says he was also offered the chance to travel for the first time. He'd never been on a plane before. He didn't even have a passport. And then one day he did and was whisked off on an all-expenses-paid holiday to Morocco. They brought him to a place that's seen its share of intrigue, Casablanca. And of all the luxury resort hotels in all the towns in the world, Mr Unja walked into the Sheraton, where he was to discover there's no such thing as a free holiday. Mr Unja says he met two lawyers from the London firm McFarlane's who were acting for Trafigura. He says they questioned him about his evidence. McFarlane's have told us tonight that they had valid and exceptional legal reasons for agreeing to meet Mr Unja because of evidence that fraudulent and exaggerated claims were being made against Trafigura. McFarlane's paid for Mr Unja's travel and expenses, but say they neither made nor offered any other payment or inducement. Back in the village of Jibi, events in London appear remote. They're still dealing with Trafigura's waste. It's been bagged up and stacked on the edge of the village, but it hasn't been taken away. They came, they dumped it, and never mind those who are there. If they died, too bad for them. If they leave, great. That is just incredible. This disbelief is still widely felt in Abidjan, nearly three years after they were poisoned by waste from the West. 
It could have been dealt with safely in Europe, but it wasn't, and some of the world's poorest people are living with the consequences. Well, tonight, Traffic Euro issued a statement saying they weren't responsible for the dumping of the waste from the Probo Koala and that in any case it wasn't toxic and that it couldn't have caused deaths and widespread injury in Abidjan. The full statement's on our website.